Hello, in this video we're going to discuss the determinants of the price elasticity of demand. Background. The price elasticity of demand measures how responsive quantity demanded is to changes in price. Several factors influence whether demand for a good is elastic. Elastic meaning consumers are very price sensitive or inelastic, consumers are not very price sensitive. So the first determinant of elasticity of demand, price elasticity of demand, and probably the most important determinant is going to be the availability of close substitutes. Goods with close substitutes tend to have more elastic demand. Butter has margarine as a close substitute, so demand for butter is likely to be more elastic. There are not a lot of good substitutes for gasoline or health care, so demand here tends to be more inelastic. Mountain Dew, the soft drink Mountain Dew, has a lot of good substitutes, so demand is more elastic. It is easier for consumers to escape price increases when there are many close substitute goods available. Necessities versus luxuries our second determinant for the price elasticity of demand. Necessities tend to have inelastic demand, whereas luxuries tend to have more elastic demand. So for example, doctor visits might be considered more of a necessity versus sailboats a luxury. So doctor visits will tend to have more inelastic demand, sailboats more elastic demand. Food is necessary for survival, so that will tend to have more inelastic demand. Consumers will not be as price sensitive here for food items versus jewelry, which is a luxury, not, enough, not required for survival. So jewelry will, tell, will tend to have more elastic demand. Medicine, more likely considered a necessity, so more inelastic demand. Vacation travel, more likely considered a luxury good, so more elastic demand. One thing to note, there are not a lot of good substitutes for necessities, not a lot of good substitutes for food, not a lot of good, good substitutes for health care or doctor visits uh, if you're extremely sick. So that tends to make goods more inelastic. Definition of the market. Narrowly defined markets tend to have more elastic demand. Broadly defined markets tend, tend to have less elastic demand. So examples, food is a broadly is a broad category that tends to be more inelastic. Ice cream is a narrow category, so that tends to be more elastic. Vanilla ice cream here is a very narrowly defined market, so that tends to be very elastic. You'll also note here there are not a lot of good substitutes for food. There are more good substitutes for ice cream, and there's a lot of good substitutes for vanilla, for vanilla ice cream. There's chocolate ice cream and strawberry ice cream. And so some examples, clothing again, here would be a broad category, more inelastic demand, blue jeans, a narrower category, more elastic demand, and a specific brand of blue jeans, Wrangler blue jeans, very narrowly defined uh, market. It's gonna have a very elastic demand. So note, narrowly defined markets have lots of substitutes, so demand is more elastic. Time horizon. Goods tend to have more elastic demand over longer time horizons. In the short term or short run, people have less flexibility to adjust consumption patterns from changing prices. In the longer term, people have more options to adjust behavior. So for example, say the price of gasoline goes up in the short run, uh, in the short run, uh, going to be more inelastic demand. People still need to get to school, get to work. In the long term or in the long run, we expect uh, the demand for gasoline to be more elastic. People are going to be more price responsive. Given enough time, people can sell their gas guzzling vehicle, buy something more fuel efficient. They can maybe move closer to work uh, to cut down on how much gasoline they need to purchase to get to work. So in the long run, it's easier to adjust to price changes. All right, and finally, proportion of income. Goods that represent a larger proportion of consumers' budgets tend to have more elastic demand. 
things like automobiles, housing, furniture, vacation travel, home remodeling. These are sort of big ticket items. So consumers will be more price sensitive for these items. Goods that represent a small proportion of consumers' budgets tend to have more inelastic demand. Salt, pencils, toothpicks, dental floss. This doesn't take up a large fraction of consumer household budgets. So if the items of uh, these things were to increase, uh, it's not going to break the budget. Uh, so again, consumers are going to be less price uh, sensitive for these items. Okay, that's it.